Hey folks, it's New Year's Day and I'm happy to be alive. And before I get to the topic of, is there, <coughs> excuse me, is there free will? Before I get to the topic of, is there free will? Did you know I have a podcast called Where There's a Will? Podcast with violinist Will Taylor. Yeah, you can check it out. Go search for Where There's a Will podcast with violinist Will Taylor. I would just so appreciate it if you went there and you subscribed and you followed me. It's It's been slow going, but there's some really nice content there, including a podcast about a local marching band called Minor Mishap that I celebrated the solstice with. So I was driving and your followers and shares, everything and comments are so appreciated. I was driving today and I was thinking about <clears throat> this comment I made about a friend and their theater project. And I'm not gonna mention it because I've been trying this new practice of catching myself in gossip, talking about other people when they aren't present. And I heard about this practice where you don't talk to people, you don't talk about people if they are not present in the physical space that you're in. And I've been trying it and I've been really enjoying this. It really helps keep you in the present moment. So anyway, I was thinking about this person that's doing a theater show. I'm not gonna mention their name, but, but how she has this kind of personality that's really strong. And in a way you could call it, she has a little bit of piss and vinegar. And I started thinking about that, about how does that develop? How does somebody develop a personality that's very kind of defensive, pushy, almost like they lead with a, a sort of defensiveness. And and to have compassion about it, I started thinking, well, you, I don't know what kind of parents or um, family situation they grew up that caused this, so I have compassion and I can learn to flow with that and not take it personally that underneath that defensiveness is a real human being that's just trying to live their life and find joy how they can in any given moment from the next moment to the next. I've learned this a lot in Al-Anon, especially having a family member who has uh, been going through addiction, uh, that I didn't cause it, I can't cure it, and I can't control it. So when you back off and you just observe and you and you can flow with whatever comes to, with, to you, you're gonna be a lot happier. At least I have found, let's just say that I have found that I'm a lot happier. So I was thinking about this person that has the piss and vinegar personality at times, not always like this. And then I started thinking there's some people maybe that are, um, that are on the street, that have lived on the street, who have really formed this extremely hard piss and vinegar personality. And so you can attribute it to the environment that they're around that mental illness has been developed and, and has, has kind of took root because of that environment that they're in. And so you don't take it personally. <clears throat> but then I started thinking, okay, so is it, is it a choice? Or, in, or is it free will? Or is, are we all at the whim of the chemicals in our body, our pasts, our childhood trauma, whatever's happened to us in the past three months? Whatever is going on with us in the current moment in terms of what is what is our chemical makeup, adrenaline, neuroepinephrine, serotonin, how much sleep we've had, what, what food we've been eating, what drugs we've been taking, what alcohol we've been consuming, all that affects the choices we make, the thoughts that happen in our mind. <clears throat> so are we at the whim of our environment? And basically what I described is our environment which would suggest that maybe there is no such thing as free will. But on the other hand, then I thought, how many of you know some people have been dealt the most horrible deal in life? Quadriplegic. I'll give you an example. There's this guy that, does tour, that tours around the world doing public speaking, and he has no legs. Literally from his torso up, he has no torso down, he has nothing and he has no arms, and he has to depend on other people to feed him, but he travels around the world doing motivational speaking. So he's been dealt a terrible environmental blow, and yet he's one of the most positive people who has turned around. So that seems like me, that's a choice. That's a choice 
to work with what you've got to live life to the greatest, to make an impact with others. That seems like free will to me. How many other stories, like Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning? How about the for the, the players that were in the Playing for Time movie, that were in the Holocaust uh, <clears throat> concentration camp, and they learned to play music together? How many situations like that can you think of where you could say a human being was dealt a horrible hand with the environment, with the chemicals in their body? How many people do you know that have recovered fully from being an alcoholic to the edge of losing their life and killing others, but have come back? How many people do you know who have gone to prison, who have come back to choose a different path with their life? And how many don't? So is there such thing as free will? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the full answer is, but I think it's fun to talk about. I'd like to believe <clears throat> that there is. I like to believe that we can go in and out of free will, that a lot of times we are floating in unconsciousness and are being sort of controlled by our chemistry and our past. But I like to think that there are times when we're truly present, whatever that looks like for you. I know that, I think I know what that looks like for me. We are truly present and it's really hard to hold that for a long period of time. And I think that's what a lot of the Eastern philosophies work on, is holding that state. But I think that the brain is designed for what we call, I think it's called automaticity. It's designed to conserve energy. So part of the brain's uh, adaptation ability that it has adapted over a million years to conserve Energy is for us to zone out, is for us to not be in the present moment, for us to become consumed with our story. Because to most of us, it seems like it takes a lot of energy to stay in the present moment. But through meditation, through dance, through movement, through being in the flow with, one's, with what one loves in life, I think we can be in the, the present moment. I think if we don't really truly have choice, it feels like we have a choice. And I'd love to hear what you think about that below. Have a great New Year's Day and uh, do something that scares you every day. Every day, like Eleanor Roosevelt says.